Hi, good afternoon. My name is Stephanie. I'm one of the social workers here in the Wellness Center at Boston IVF. Um, my name is Dylan. I'm also a licensed social worker. I'm the manager of mental health at the Wellness Center. I think the hope for a lot of us that are managing stress and anxiety is that there possibly is this magic wand we can wave and that we don't feel it anymore or that it vanishes. Although we know that that's not how our feelings and our emotions work. And so what I would say is kind of create a self-care list for you that you can sort of turn to in moments where you're feeling more anxious. I think sort of the best or one of the best ways to sort of support yourself through this entire process is really to seek out your own individual support. Talking with a therapist, maybe engaging in some support groups um, because you really want the opportunity to just talk about your experience and the emotions behind it and sort of what it feels like and to process that. So for staying in the moment, I would just, you know, suggest kind of relying on those self-care activities that you like doing, right? Whether that's kind of going and hang out with friends, getting your nails done, being outside in nature, kind of reconnecting with nature, um, reading a book, journaling can be really helpful. Watching a comfort TV show can sometimes be really helpful or listening to a favorite playlist that you've curated, you know, just doing things that sort of help to bring you joy and focusing on kind of you know, your senses. That's one of the best ways to stay present, right? Focus on what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're feeling. Um, you know, in a lot of ways that just forces us to be more, more present with ourselves. And I think, you know, you can cut yourself some slack because of course you're always going to think about sort of the next step. I think that's part of human nature, but try not to assign an outcome to that yet. Um, things haven't happened. And so we know that, you know, the possibility could be endless. And all you really have to focus on is what you're going through in the moment. And so trying to kind of keep your stress as well managed as you can is a, is a really good idea. But also knowing that, you know, a healthy level of stress is kind of part of life. And so we need to rely on our coping for that. Um, but yeah, just kind of focus on like what brings you joy in that moment. Um, healthy distractions are always helpful. I think it can also be a time to like take off your fertility patient hat. And so while you are pretty overwhelmed with this process, make sure you're also dedicating time to like your role as possibly a sister or daughter, or maybe already a mom or a wife or a friend to make sure that those other areas of your life are also getting some of your attention because it's huge. Uh, but our other areas of our life do need some of that time too. So to just say, okay, I'm going to take like a few hours break from being fertility patient mode and I'm going to go be a sister or whatever else that looks like for you. So making sure you're giving some love and attention to these other parts of you and your life is also really important. So essentially we give sort of general recommendations, healthy distractions, being social, meeting with friends and family, physical activity, engaging in your support networks, um, self-care, you know, whatever that looks like for you. Those are all good sort of general uh, suggestions. I think in the two-week wait, one of the best things I can recommend is sort of just positive, healthy distraction. We're always going to sort of be thinking about the next milestone, and it's good to sort of acknowledge that, acknowledge the thought, acknowledge that you're thinking of it, but then how do we sort of transition to focusing on the present, being in the moment, sort of just allowing whatever to happen to happen without trying to put too much expectation or pressure on ourselves. Um, but in terms of loss, it's important to sort of honor the loss and to allow yourself to grieve. And for some, they can do that while simultaneously holding on to this optimistic hope and moving forward. And if you're able to sort of balance the two at the same time, um, you know, that's normal. This process comes with a lot of conflicting feelings, but if it feels helpful to give yourself some time in between so that you can take more time to process or rest, that's a personal choice that is a good fit for some people. For others, it's not based on different factors potentially. Um, and so again, in those moments, find support that you can talk about your grief and process your grief while also talking about 
this kind of cautious optimism that you hold on the other side. Um, I think the most important thing I can tell folks is just to sort of give yourself grace, right? Your body is going through sort of a tremendous amount of stress and preparation to, you know, receive an embryo transfer and get pregnant. And so with that, you know, is again, sort of a loss of control of how our body changes physically. Um, and so I think it's, it's okay to just sort of give yourself grace and allow kind of those changes to come and also sort of celebrate that those changes mean that you're kind of working towards this goal of getting pregnant and having a family. And part of that is just sort of giving up part of, of your old self. And sometimes that is, you know, kind of what your body looks like, but it is doing a tremendous thing. And so in the other flip side, you know, you can sort of value this amazing transformation that your body is able to do.